on. Right there. <clears throat> awesome. Howdy folks, Cal Kellogg here. Here's a quick tip. Now, I really like to see what's going on on my downrigger rod. I like to know if I'm getting hit and not hooking the fish. Um, I just like to see what's going on down there. And one of the mistakes I see guys make all the time is reeling their rod into too severe of a bend. You don't want that rod in there, you know, as, as tight as a guitar string. That's not necessary. Now, often people tell me they do that because they're thinking, well, the rod's going to pop up when the line comes out the clip and it's going to take some of the slack out of the line. There's no way. I'm fishing 25 feet deep. That means when that initially pops, there's 25 feet of slack in the line. What's going to get the slack out of the line is cranking on the reel. I can't get enough bend in that rod to take even a small percentage of that slack out of the line. So if that's your thinking, that's kind of a waste of time. I like to have my rod in there. You know, I put a little bend in it, but I want to see. I want to see when I'm getting hit. I want to see what's going on. And I tend to put my line in the clip pretty deep. Sometimes the fish will pop it off. Sometimes I'll pop it off myself. I know there's some really expensive releases on the market that reliably, you know, release every time. Personally, I'm not that worried about it. I'm a pro guide. I fish almost every day. I probably go through two, three, four dozen clips a year. Sometimes I lose them. Sometimes they fall off the line. Sometimes they just wear out. So I much prefer the Scotty clothespin type, the, the smallest clips they make for trout and landlocked salmon fishing. I put the line well back in the clip. I wash my rod tip and I don't mind taking an extra second to pop the, the line out of the clip myself. I'm going to say, I'm going to say about half my fish pop the clip, about half of them don't. But anyway, to each his own in terms of the clip. But just remember, don't overload your rod when you're out fishing. For trout or kokanee, you want to see what's going on down there. You want to know if you're getting bites. You also want to know if you've got a small fish on down there and, you know, he's hooked and, and your bait's really not fishing anymore because maybe you got a small trout or a small kokanee on the line. You've got your rod overloaded in the, in the uh, rod holder or, or overloaded going down to the downrigger. You're just not going to see that. You're not going to know what's going on down there. Anyway. That's a quick tip. That's going to help you put more and bigger fish in the in the boat or in the kayak over your fishing career. I'm out of here for now. I'll catch you next time right here on YouTube. And if you're looking for downrigger rods, lead core rods, any of my baits, anything you see me using on the channel, there's one place to go. That's FHSFishing.com. We'll hook you up with what you need and we'll get it to your house really efficiently, really quickly. Thanks a lot, guys. Feels like a hefty fish. 20 minutes on the water, two hookups, four bites. Can't complain about that, that's for dang sure. Awesome news. <laughs> Trout Tricks Minnow, guys, it's a killer. It is a killer. Okay, so many trout on soft plastics. More guys should be pulling them, but they're not. Well, my guys here on the channel are, and catching a lot of fish on them just like I do. Let's see here. That was uh, about a total of 70 feet behind the kayak. Another nice rainbow. Another husky fish. Another chunkaroo. Looks like another planted trout. Oh, that's a heavy one right there. Two pounder right in the corner of the mouth on the uh, Trout Tricks Minnow. Show you this guy real quick. Oh yeah, he's a planter, but he's a beaut. Off the top of the fish finder and into the water. <laughs> oh my. <laughs>